is January 2nd, 2023. Um, I'm uploading another video from yesterday. Now, yesterday I was at my client's church at Trinity Gospel Temple, and it was January 1st, 2023. One of the guys were talking on the phone said that agent is telling people he knew she was faking she was sick and faking she got well well that poor family was grieving so he stole all her money to teach her a lesson no he stole all my money because he's a thief and a drug addict okay oh uh, and he's in it with drug dealers do you know what happens when agents and officers become addicted to drugs they become oh my god scary villains that's what happens and they don't think they're stoppable. That's what happens. Okay? So, um, and he's, and it's not funny him saying that he left her up there to die and told them because she was faking she was sick and faking she got well. Well, they were grieving. He didn't care if they killed what they did to her. That's not funny him saying that. Well, you know what? He's just pulling a fast one. Mm-hmm. Trying to pull people's little seven-year-old IQs. Okay, now I've had trouble with storage, so I'm going to keep this very short. And, um, but, yeah. Like I said, he was the one in that store that day when Dave showed up after he hit me with a board in the face. Because if you listen to the clues Memorial Day weekend 2018, or 2019, at the food counter, a white woman to an African-American man, screaming it out. Walmart for it's my daughter her husband Daisy met her in Ravenna at a store it's for my daughter they did all this for and our family watching her doing this Michelle and Michelle showing up at the family church a little young 19 20 year old kid my dad's FBI he works the case I date Dave okay so it's her family doing this it's Michelle Dixie knew Michelle and said I couldn't even figure out why Michelle's family would even involve herself in something like this and just for Dave to be able to go out with somebody else well, that and to get everything and that agent was going to steal from the witness protection program. See, that's the whole thing of them lining me up to call the FBI to be that scared and then him steal it. See, I had had, and, and this is where it makes me mad. And Strange, Strange may be an occult leader and he has these people brainwashed because he's an occult leader. And it's one thing when they fall for it. And it's another thing when an officer, an agent with an IQ level of anything actually knows that fibromyalgia goes into spontaneous remission all the time. All the time. Okay? Um, if you Google... Um, spontaneous remission fibromyalgia, 80% of the people after two years. I had had it way over two years. I had had uh, six surgeries, six to eight surgeries within two years. I was in chronic pain so bad. It was ridiculous. Okay. They were giving me, uh, oh God. I Well, okay, I'm going to put it down this way. I had uh, hysterectomy in two different parts. I had my appendix taken out. I had my thyroid removed. I they had to go through my stomach and around my belly button several times to repair things inside. Uh, in the middle of it, um, my kidney twisted and started shooting back up into my kidney. Um, my kidney tube twisted and, and the fluid started shooting up, which was making the kidney bleed and I was pouring out blood. They had to go through my back, cut it four inches, go in and remove the damaged part, and then fix my kidney. I was in pain off the chart, taking your appendix out, your gallbladder, cut side to side with a hysterectomy. Uh, then the original, his part, the first part of the hysterectomy, then the second, and then the repairs inside, oh, about four or five times. I mean, I had six, eight surgery or more, and then the kidney one, okay? So my muscles are so cut up, it's not even funny. I'm in so much chronic pain, it's not funny. It set off an autoimmune disorder, fibromyalgia. I'm in so much pain, they start giving me steroid injections. I'm getting up to 30 shots in my neck and my back. Um, and then they start on all these different pain medicines that range your brain level. And then I start swelling. I gain 100 pounds from the steroids. I start swelling. Okay, and I, they're taking turkey baster full of fluid off my knees. 
and I'm going to orthopedic doctors, I'm going to endocrinologist, I'm going to all these different doctors, right? And they have me on 10, 15 medicines and my heart's starting to get off, my thyroid stops working and I'm swelling up like a balloon and they're not even bothering to yank me off every kind of medication and then figure out what I'm having an allergic reaction to. They're just letting me swell. Okay, and but this one doctor keeps saying, well, if you have fibromyalgia, it goes into spontaneous remission. We don't know why. It's like your body gets traumatized. It goes into shock. And when it goes into shock, um, that it uh, goes into shock and it goes into these autoimmune disorders where you have chronic pain, then uh, it, uh, one day it'll just disappear. You just get better. And we don't know why it's happening, but it's happening. And that was 2001. To look for it, it will happen. You'll just get better one day. And I look at him like, you're crazy. I'm in so much pain. It's ridiculous. I do have degenerative joint disease. It's found on an MRI. And some, one doctor thought I had rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Now, there's one thing. 88% of the people, it looks like you're in spontaneous remission because you don't have pain. You have to exercise. You have to build up your muscles and your tendons around those damaged joints. You have to keep busy because you have to build up to protect those joints. And that's what keeps the swelling and the pain out of them. Okay? You have to keep moving. Matter of fact, even when I moved out in April 19, I used to walk two and three miles at the park. I walked all the time because it keeps all the muscles built up and keeps pain away. It builds natural endorphins on top of it. Okay, and that's the way I used to walk at Lennox. I used to mow the lawn at Lennox. My son lived 0.9 miles away, almost a mile. Go over and get the kids, the grandkids, and we walk around allotment, which was a half a mile a couple of times. Walk another mile home. Walk two or three miles a couple of times a week. So after we get up there and they kick in the door, and then I'm waking up with bruises and I can't even mow the lawn, that's not me. It was them. Date rape drug me. Okay, and that's why nobody understood why I was waking up with bruises, giant ones. Everybody seen them all over. They thought I was working too hard. I'd have little tiny impact bruises from moving that furniture out. But why would in the into the storage unit, but put it in the storage unit to the house, all of a sudden I'm having giant bruises and everybody thinks I'm working too hard. That's what I thought. I didn't know what was wrong with me. And here they're date rape drugging me. What date rape drug is injectable? Ketamine, Rufinol, Profinol. Okay, anesthesia. You don't remember. You're chemically sleepwalking for four to six hours. It takes 60 seconds. You don't remember enough. Okay? And, yeah, that idiot was the one in the store that day. Mm-hmm. And Judge P is grandpa or uncle. Bill from the Freemason is probably Will Jr. And um, Alec or Alex is probably a brother or cousin and Michelle's his daughter and they're into it with drugs. They're drug dealers, running drug dealers. And they ran this big scam down here. That's where it's an oh my God case. But he had to open that protect a lie case to steal from the fats. That's where it's an oh my God. Mm -hmm. See, there's one thing. That agent knew fibromyalgia, and 80% of the people, after two years, spontaneously goes in remission. He knew that degenerative joint diseases, as long as you stay busy and active, even though you still have them, you don't have pain, you don't have suffering, you don't have swelling, but you have to stay active. And it looks like you went into spontaneous remission, but your activities is what's controlling that swelling and everything else because you're walking, you're active. And it looks like spontaneous remission, even though you still have the degenerative joint disease and you still have the remote uh, arthritis. It's just you're keeping busy and it controls all the pain. You build up the tendons and muscles and the fibromyalgia is just like your body's being in post-traumatic syndrome because it's been hurt so bad. And then one day, I, I always say by the grace of God, your body just cracks it. See, that's where the one where I was so sick. The one lady's like, I know this one doctor. He treats pain with pain, a pain medicine. He gets you off all that other crazy drug. I went and seen him. He said, I had a lady almost as bad as you. In less than a year, she's running on a treadmill. I looked at him like he's nuts. He said, you know, I'm going to start you on this pain medicine. He said, I want you just to start moving a little. He said, as you start moving, your muscles will relax. 
He said, and as they relax a little more, you'll move them a little more. You'll get a little stronger. He said, I want to start exercising that because your muscles are so tight, they'll just put them in spasm. I'll make it worse. He said, but once I get you moving, I start getting you, your muscles to relax and getting used to relaxing. He said, we can eventually start adding uh, different stretches and stuff. He said, we'll get there. And you know what? It worked. Because before I got all the way well, where I couldn't do anything, I was starting to drive a car. Even though my legs were swollen, and they, I was probably allergic reaction from everything. Because I, they, like the one nurse said, you always blame the steroids. Because they were giving me uh, up to 30 shots of steroid injections before that. Trying to trigger point. And I, I gained 100 pounds. And blah, blah. But I was on 10, 15 medicine. They didn't bother to find out what I was allergic to. And I was swelling to the point they were pulling turkey-based syringes of fluid off my face. And then I was wearing braces because the water was swerve the... Uh, the um, uh, the knees out of place, and they would stick steroids, and I go to an orthopedic doctor that would do it, hmm? and um, so it's just like I had so much medical proof. This is where it gets to the point of infuriates me. I suffered really bad after I got sick. I suffered really, really bad, and um. But where he got me out of pain, I had braces to keep my legs in place. I was up even the day that they died. Now, I had nothing to do with Phil's, Phil and Tyler's death. We're at home working on our house. Brian Laney had to show up and tell us that they had been killed. He was late for a church baseball game. He ran a stop sign, semi hit. Phil paid with that mistake with his life. It killed him and his grandson. He ran a stop sign, a semi hit. My whole family is at my house. We have nothing to do with nothing. We knew nothing. Okay? And we're, I'm already toddling around with just braces on and I'm getting stronger. And I'm already driving a car where the guy's, I has me on fentanyl patches. He has me on Vicodin. He has me on so much drugs, it's not even funny. But I'm getting stronger and I'm getting better. Okay? Hmm? I have nothing to do with anything. And then a few months later, just like they predicted, spontaneous remission. Just like 80% of the patients that have fibromyalgia, it just disappears. Now, did I have anything to do with Phil or Tyler's death? No. Phil ran a stop sign, a semi hit him. His arrogant, his ignorance of running a stop sign cost him his life and his grandson's life. And it's one thing when an occult leader makes up something to brainwash people she was faking she was sick and faking she got well while he was grieving. And somebody with any kind of education, when you can just Google spontaneous remission fibromyalgia, 80% of the people it goes into spontaneous remission, where you have this chronic autoimmune disorder from going through something. You're in like basically post-traumatic syndrome. Your body is. And you're tight and you're sick and you're in pain because you've been, I've been cut on so many times. And then they've given me all these different drugs and it's the drugs are making me sick and they're making me swell. And then it's just like a rollerball. They just had to get me off of it, get me on pain medicine, get me moving. And then it goes into spontaneous. I start getting better. Then it just erases itself. Now I do have degenerative joint disease that's found on uh, MRI report. You could even see one of the swellings. I had a three inch swelling thing up beside my knee, a fluid. My body dissolved it too. Um... And, but I have the degenerative joint disease. Some one, one doctor even thought I had rheumatoid arthritis. The whole thing of it is, it looks like spontaneous remission with them, but it's getting out, moving, building up the joints and the muscles, and it keeps the chronic pain and the swelling down on your joints when you get out and exercise. And it controls it. You don't need pain medicine. Okay? So it's one thing when a cult leader lies to brainwash people and they fall for it because they're brainwashed and anybody with any law enforcement or education you can google that this is controlled by exercise and the other one goes into spontaneous remission because this person just went through something horrible and it made them sick and their body just automatically corrects itself and it happens to 80 percent of the people
It's not uncommon for either one of these to go into spontaneous remission. There's nothing miraculous. It just happens. And the whole thing of it is, is getting those people moving and exercising. And then it goes into remission. And it's a common phenomenon. And that agent knew that. So them telling people they did, they left me up there to die because they knew I was fake and I was sick and fake and I got well. That's a lie. He left me out there to die because he was going to steal the money. Mm -hmm. Just like he bullied me, made me big into a false statement. Just like he badgered me and made me grovel for my life. And just like, you know, I'll list you informant. That's the only thing that he did legal. And then he opens it and then tells me, you know, you tell someone I'll list you crazy and no one can help it. He can't do that. He's badgering me. He's bullying me. People are like, oh, he can do that. No, he can't. He is not a sitting judge. He is not a sitting judge to put a gag order on me. He can't tell me. He's just a higher law enforcement. He can't tell me I can't say anything. The sheriff can't tell you you can't say anything. Mm -mm. Nobody can tell you you can't say anything but a sitting judge putting a gag order on you. Is he a sitting judge? No, he's just a higher law enforcement. Can he list me crazy? No, he's not a psychiatrist. What was he doing? He was bullying. Badgering laws, Department of Justice, 1729, as destruction to justice and tampering with evidence. He was going to steal that money, and he used all these people's low IQs like he could actually do any of this. He can't do any of it. He can't even say it. He can't do it. He can't do nothing. And you guys are so, these people are so stupid, like, oh, he can do that. No, he can't. No, he can't. He goes to jail for it. That's where I've talked to sheriffs out of this area. Your local police arrested him for it, right? And I said, no. And they're like, they want to know if they're slow, if the local police are slow for not arresting him. That agent can't talk to you like that. that he can't do this, and neither can that judge. And their family. I was talking to Dixie. Dixie's like, I was wondering why Michelle's family wasn't even involved in this. I said, well, I did call the FBI. You knew Katie was leaving threats in the mall. Yeah, I, I, I said, you even heard Dave tell you. Yeah. And I said, you know, the following rendering was linked back to that church. She said it was linked back to that church. I told her about the attempted kidnapping. I told her uh, how what the attempted break-in. They actually did tell us... Uh, Perry Police, they knew what the security system was. I said, they were supposed to put me in the witness protection program. I'm supposed to get 5000 a month. They were supposed to move me out and hide me. And Michelle's family sold it for themselves. She went, Karen, is that why they were helping out? I'm so sorry. She said, I couldn't figure out people like that, why they would even be involved with Dave just supposed to be able to be able to go out with somebody else. Why would they involve themselves in that? They wouldn't. They stole from the federal government. That agent is in it with drug dealers, like they were talking in Walmart. The police realized that they just hired a bunch of drug dealers to do this to her. They are drug dealers. But what makes it a, oh my God, an agent out of his area was in it with those drug dealers. And he's got a drug problem. And then he stole and embezzled from the federal government. What's really scary is he's the one that went to Paymer. Why would he go to Paymer? Dave's dating his daughter. Dave already knows I called the FBI. So why did he go to Paymer? Hmm? To get a list of finding out who else they want to kill. That he can put in the witness protection program, steal their money. That they can run the same scam. Hmm? Is that it? Is that it? Because it's why on earth was he at Paymer's when Dave was already dating Michelle. That's his daughter. That excludes the FBI from working a case against me. It excludes, and with it being a Portage County judge, it excludes Portage County from working anything. Nobody ever said a word to me of any wrongdoing. That's where it's rich. I've never been questioned on wrongdoing. I've never been prosecuted. I've never found guilty. Matter of fact, Will told me to admit to no wrongdoing and he'd take care of everything in the end. I was supposed to get moved out. And where they're saying that he knew I was fake and I sick and fake and I got well. So he stole all the money to teach me. Like, no, he stole all the money because he's a thief. You know why he left me up there to die? Because he only could sell the terrorism. He sold the police information to the protective custody case. Only ones you see me is police and agents. Hmm? Nobody else. It's a felony. It's a severe felony being in somebody's home. They try to blame the Portage County Sheriff. They had no idea what anybody would be in my home. It, it was a good five-year sentence. 
Even, even like Officer Reinhardt said, even the FBI couldn't be in your home. It's special protective like cases only with statements. They couldn't even be in your home. You have a right to remain quiet. Did you know that? Fifth Amendment. You have a right to an attorney. Six. Right to a fair and speedy court trial. Seven. Eighth. Right not to be mistreated. Fourth Amendment. Right to privacy. First Amendment. Freedom of speech. See, we have a constitution. This insanity. They think they can run. Like they said, they were running around making up scenarios. Trying to make it me think that I wouldn't get money. And I wasn't falling for it. Because I'm not stupid like these people. And they said that guy stole the money on day one. They were talking about yesterday. Why is anybody saying a word? They were talking about it December 2nd, 22, and Wendy's Alliance. Some one guy from the case stole the money, all the money from day one. Yeah, he stole it. So replace it. Put him in jail for stealing a third of a million dollars. See, every month I'm alive, he gets five to $10,000 from my witness protection program money. My 5000 allowance, he gets my housing, he gets my rent, he gets my insurance money, he gets everything. And he's put it in his dirty pocket. That's why they helped. That's probably why he went to pay mercy if they can't pick off a couple other victims that he can put in the witness protection program so that he can grab their money too. They're just thieves, liars, and drug dealers, and they have a drug dealing problem. These people follow me around. They're nothing but drug dealers. They were talking about it in Walmart the other day. They realized they just hired a bunch of drug dealers to do this tour before. None of this is funny. But what makes it an oh my God is an agent out of his area. Helped out in this. Badgered me. Bullied me. Turned, uh, told on me. Listed me informant and then stole the money. And he was in it with the drug dealers. That's where it makes it an oh my god case. Mm -hmm. It makes it an oh my god case. I gotta upload this. But this is what makes it an oh my god case. So all these people run around terrorizing me. They are just friends or part of the drug dealing group. That's it. There's nothing else. That's why everybody's finding out what's going on and they have yelled at everywhere that it's nothing but them stealing from the case. And they said it clear to Pennsylvania, Maslin, Canton, North Canton, everywhere. It is nothing but them stealing from the case. And they sold the lock-in and selling terrorism online. That's it. Uh-huh. That's it. Michelle's family isn't funny. Mm-mm. They were the ones in that store that day when Dave showed up. They're the ones that took the 25 grand hit. They're the ones, and that's why that Eric made fun of these people for falling for it. November 18, 22, 2 to 6 p.m., Walmart 62, between 2 and 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, the FBI knows Will can't tell me to stay quiet or no one can help me. They know he can't talk to me that way. They know he's not a sitting judge to put a gag order on me. They know he doesn't, a failure to protect is abuse and misconduct, so him telling me that nobody can help me is abusing me. Him bullying me into saying I'm lying when I'm not is badgering. He lost his bath. 1729. Department of Justice, obstruction justice and tampering with evidence, and of course, and him threatening to put me in jail if I didn't say I was lying. That is, yeah, obstruction to justice and tampering with evidence, this whole thing is. And then him stealing the witness protection program money. Uh, embezzlement charges S641 is um, any money withheld met from one person or misdirected is embezzlement under 100 is one year. Um, and anything uh, above 1,000 is five to 30 years in federal prison. These people for, for even saying they were in my home is stalking an obstruction to justice. Even like Reinhardt's officer Reinhardt Lowesville. Even the FBI cut me in your home outside a protective light case with um, statements. Even the Portage County Sheriff's, they tried to frame them. Miss Hall, what these people are saying they did to you is illegal. Not one of our officers had any knowledge of you being in our, your home or uh, uh, anybody else being in your home. And what they're saying they did is illegal. It is. See, Will can't even say you were in my home or that he was in my home because of he um, would go to jail. Exactly. And it'd be, what the hell were you doing stalking here? And it's entrapment. And it's not, I looked it up where Officer Reinhardt said no one could even look or listen. I looked it up, they couldn't, they couldn't even ever use it. And I was talking to this one sheriff, he said, you know, things can be so photoshopped anymore, you can't trust anything. See, that's why it's a special protective light cases only with statements.
because it erases the Constitution. These are just drug dealers doing this to me with an agent out of his area, and I don't even think the agent's down here anymore. Because uh, all the big truck guys, the Bill from the Freemasons, Alex, they've been gone for two years. Henry Moffey's been gone for about six. He's probably a drug dealer. Um, the guys from New York, the Gentleman's Club from Florida, where they said they came up to save me. This is a sweet concept, but they weren't up here. They were probably for that. They were probably helping keep an eye on me and running their drugs. Um, yeah, my one friend thinks that drug where they're going ha 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 and confessing. He thinks they're getting high on coke. That that's the drug that they're passing around. For them to come in and confess ah, and find all this funny. It's not funny. And people need to realize how not funny this is. I got to get going. I got to upload this. Um, and these people are drug dealers. So they said something about a prince and a king. And that would make them drug dealers too. Somebody said the king's been in town. And that means some kind guy calls himself the king and he's a drug dealer. It's not funny.